Hello students, welcome to the class today. As we had decided in the last class, we'll be taking up a new topic today, jumbled paragraphs. What exactly is the meaning of the word jumbled? Jumble means an untidy or confused mixture of thoughts, feelings and things. For example, don't leave your clothes in a jumble like that. Or another example is the events of last week are jumbled in my mind. Let us now look at jumbled sentences. Instead of saying, tell me where is he going, if one says, he is going, tell me where, it is a jumbled sentence. Why does he want to escape? Now that's a correct sentence, but instead of saying it correctly, if someone says, why does escape he to want? Now that is an absolutely jumbled sentence. Another example is, he is leaving for his village to sell his land along with his wife. Instead of saying, he is leaving for his village along with his wife to sell his land. I am sure with the examples that we have gone through, you would have definitely understood the meaning of the word jumbled as well as what jumbled sentences are. Now let us look at what a paragraph is. A paragraph is a piece of the text consisting of two or more sentences that develop one single idea. Every paragraph has a main idea which sometimes comes at the beginning of the paragraph and sometimes in the end. It shows that there is no hard and fast rule that says that the main idea should come at the beginning of the paragraph or at the end. Facts and details are given one after the other leading to a summing up in the last sentence. A paragraph should have unity, a logical progression of thought, variety and a conclusion. We are sure to obtain 100% accuracy if we approach the topic in a scientific manner, that is, in a methodical and systematic way, putting our skills of observation and thought and our knowledge of language to the best use. Unscrambling jumbled sentences is a very useful exercise to sharpen our minds and to keep our minds sharp. Patience and perseverance are an absolute must for solving jumbled paragraphs, rearranging the paragraphs to put the sentences in a clear, logical and sequential manner. Let us now look at the fundamental or the basic technique for cracking para-jumbles, another name for jumbled paragraphs. It revolves around identifying the links. We should first establish the links between one or more sentences with the help of what are called transition words. Transition words organize and connect sentences establishing a link between two or more sentences, making the shift from one sentence to the other easy and smooth. Transition words are absolutely necessary for us to provide a clue about the sentence which comes before and the sentence which comes after a given sentence. Clarity in thought and expression is absolutely necessary for a person to understand his fellow beings. A lot of misunderstandings and misapprehensions happen in our life because of lack of cohesion and coherence in our speech and writing. How do we go about unscrambling jumbled sentences? We have to first establish the link between sentences through the help of transition words. It is these transition words 
which help us to reorganize a paragraph and to put all the sentences in their right order. Let us now look at some of the words called linking words which also are called interlockers, hooks or transitionals. Some of the words which are very often used in jumbled paragraphs are also, again, besides, likewise, moreover, otherwise, subsequently, therefore, hence, and consequently. I have taken 10 examples for you to understand better what these words are, their meanings and their usage. Now let us go through each word and its usage. Also, the meaning of also is in addition to. For example, Karina is also called Bebo. Again means one more time. I want to meet him again tomorrow. Besides means in addition to something. Besides being an excellent teacher, he is also a good sports person. Likewise, in the same way. Many Europeans prefer to remain single in life. Likewise, many immigrants too. Subsequently, after in an event has taken place, the movie was successful. Subsequently, it was dubbed in three languages. Therefore, as a result, the house which we moved into was bigger and therefore more comfortable. Moreover, the word is used to introduce information. The rent was reasonable. Moreover, the location was perfect. Otherwise, this word is used to point out repercussions of an action. You will have to go now, otherwise you will miss your bus. Hence, for this reason, a better working environment improves people's performance and hence productivity. Consequently, as a result, I spent most of my money in the first week and consequently have little to spend during the last few days of my holidays. Apart from establishing order and ensuring progression of thought, connectors also establish a relationship and demonstrate the order of importance of the ideas presented. Different connectors are used for different purposes. For example, in a sentence, if an explanation is needed, the words used are namely and for instance. To take, give two examples of sentences using these two words, India has six large cities, namely Calcutta, Bombay, Chennai, New Delhi, Bangalore and Hyderabad. He is a very rash driver. For instance, he rammed his bike into a car just yesterday. When comparison is to be expressed in a sentence, the words used are than and as as. For example, he is as kind as an angel. She is taller than me. For purpose, the words used are as and as if. As I have to leave for Chennai today, I have to leave office early. She worked as if she alone were responsible for the whole college. In order to express condition, the linkers or connectors that are used are if or unless. If you want me to do your work, you have to be a little more polite. Another example, unless she works hard, she cannot pass the test. In order to understand 
the unscrambling of jumbled paragraphs, we'll now take two tasks from each of the one act plays that are there in the syllabus. The first one is from Never Never Nest, a one act play by Cedric Mount. Now let us read out the jumbled paragraph. Charming, charming, such a cozy little room and such pretty furniture. And this is the lounge. Oh, have you got a radiogram as well as a car and a piano? We like it, you know. Handy place to sit in and listen to the radiogram. And it's so nice for me when Jack's away at business. Why, of course, Aunt Jane, you simply must have a radio set nowadays. Now we can see that this is a completely jumbled paragraph. The options that there are four options that are given at the end of the jumbled paragraph and we have to choose the right one. Look at the first sentence carefully. It is a reaction to being shown a cozy little room. The only sentence in the paragraph which refers to the room is sentence B. The sentence is, and this is the lounge. Sentence B cannot definitely come after sentence A. Therefore, we can say that sentence E comes before sentence A in the paragraph. The first link is already established. The link is B A. Let us now look at the options to see which of them have the link B A. Option 1 and option 3 have it. Option 2 and option 4 are definitely ruled out. We are left with option 1 and option 3. Let us examine option 1. Let's read it out in that order. And this is the lounge. Charming, charming, such a cozy little room and such pretty furniture. We like it, you know. Handy place to sit in and listen to the radiogram. Oh, have you got a radiogram as well as a car and a piano? Why, of course, Aunt Jane, you simply must have a radio set these days. And it's so nice for me when Jack's away at business. Option one sounds sensible and it seems to be in flow. With the reading of the first two sentences of option four, it's option three itself, we know that it certainly cannot be the correct option. Option one is therefore the correct answer to the jumbled paragraph. We'll now look at task number two. Let's read out the paragraph in its jumbled way. Doctors don't expect to get paid anyway. Dr. Martin, what on earth possessed you to do that? Understand what? But you don't understand. I'm not angry, but why waste good money on the doctor? There, now you're going to be angry with me. There are again four options for this paragraph. We pick up the first link as we're reading the paragraph. Sentence C is a response to sentence D. Let's read out the two sentences, but you don't understand. Understand what? A look at the options tells us that only option one has the link DC. We quickly rule out the other three options. Let us read the paragraph in the order of the first option. Dr. Martin, what on earth possessed you to do that? There now, you're going to be angry with me. I'm not angry, but why waste good money on the doctor? Doctors don't expect to get paid anyway, but you don't understand. Understand what? It is in flow, all of you would agree with me, and we are on the right track very easily and in good time we get the right answer. We realize that option one is the correct answer. It is in flow and it is in sequence. Therefore, we have already unscrambled the paragraph. I'm sure you're, you're finding it easier as we're going from example to example.
Let's now look at another text, Refund, a one-act play by Fritz Carinthi. I will read out the paragraph in its jumbled way and then we'll try to unscramble it. Not a parent and not a pupil? Then what is he? A man, sir, outside. He wants to see you. He told me, I should say, Vasakov. What does he look like? Stupid? Intelligent? A pupil? I don't think so. He has a beard. Again, there are four options for this. One look at the paragraph tells us that sentence A cannot certainly begin the paragraph because of the use of the pronoun one. With the exception of sentence B, none of the other sentences have a noun in them. Logically, we come to the conclusion that sentence B should be the first sentence in the paragraph. A man, sir, outside, he wants to see you. That is the sentence which should come first in the paragraph. The link with sentence E followed by sentence F can be immediately established. The first link, B, E, F, is therefore clear now. A look at the options makes it clear that only option 3 has the link. We then rule out the other three options as we have already got the correct answer. Let us now read the paragraph to see if it makes sense. A man, sir, outside. He wants to see you. A pupil? I don't think so. He has a beard. Not a parent and not a pupil. Then what is he? He told me I should just say Vasakov. What does he look like? stupid, intelligent. After having got the correct answer so soon, I'm sure you're enjoying the exercise and you would be able to crack the next parajumble by yourself as quickly as ever. Now let us go on to the second task in the same play, refund. Let's read out the jumbled paragraph. Yes, I have the right to take one. What an unusual case. I shall have to consult the staff. I never heard of anything like it before. You really want to take another examination? I shall ha have to call a conference. The paragraph, as we can see, is absolutely jumbled. Let us bring a semblance of logic and sense to it. Sentence A uses a pronoun, one which rules out its being the first sentence in the paragraph. Sentence B, C, D and F cannot be the right openers, which leaves us with sentence E. You really want to take another examination. A link with sentence A is immediately established, as A is an answer to E. You really want to take another examination? Yes, I have the right to take one. One is used as a pronoun for examination. The first link EA is therefore identified. On examining the options, we see that only option four has the link EA in it. So it follows that it is the right answer. A reading of the paragraph in the order EABDCF confirms our choice. Let us read it out in its correct order. You really want to take another examination? Yes, I have the right to take one. What an unusual case. I never heard of anything like it before. I shall have to consult the staff. I shall have to call a conference. We've come to the right answer very quickly. And I'm sure you're finding it easier as we go from example to example to unscramble the jumbled paragraphs. Let's do two more examples from another play. Let us look at task number one from the murder scene of Julius Caesar by Shakespeare. There is no fellow in the firmament, but I'm constant as the northern star. The skies are painted with unnumbered sparks, 
of whose true fixed and resting quality but there is but one in all doth hold his place they are all fire and every one doth shine we immediately realize on reading the paragraph that there is a link between sentence B and D and we also realize that sentence B should come before sentence D because sentence D describes the qualities of the northern star constancy. Now let us look at the options and see which of them have the link in them. Option 1, 2 and 4 have the link. We are sure that option 1 is the correct answer. Now let us go to task number 2 of the murder scene. Yet see you but our hands, and pity to the general wrong of Rome, had done this deed, Caesar, and this the bleeding business they have done. Our hearts you see not, they are pitiful, as fire drives out fire, so pity. As we are reading the paragraph, we immediately identify the link between the sentences A and D. That sentence D comes after A, is also established. Looking at the options, we realize that option 1 and 3 have the link in them. Option 2 and 4 are therefore nowhere in the picture. Between the two options, we find after reading them once again that option 1 is the correct answer. We've done about six examples from the three plays and I'm sure you have understood completely, absolutely, what unscrambling of jumbled paragraphs is all about. To conclude our lesson, let us take a quick look at what we have studied today. We have discussed quite a few important and significant points. The meaning of the word jumble, a few examples of jumbled sentences, the essential features of a paragraph, what a jumbled paragraph is all about. We have also studied that the first step that we should take in unscrambling jumbled paragraphs is that we should establish links between the sentences with the help of transition words. And I'm sure after these exercises, you would approach the topic with more accuracy and more confidence. Practice, they say, makes a person perfect. And I'm sure as you practice more examples of this kind, you would really become a master in unscrambling jumbled paragraphs.